If you wanna avoid the pain associated with standing in front of a CNC mill, feeding a vise for hours on end, you are going to love this week's Fixture Friday. I'm gonna show you this high density work holding approach that was an absolute game changer that took us from the painful two parts at a time to 18 parts in a single cycle. And I'm gonna cover some incredibly important details that I just don't hear enough people talking about. Let's get started. So real quick, you may have noticed that it's been a while since I've put out a video. Well, in that time, I've been working on some big things, actually three big things that you might like. Now, the first is a brand new podcast. It's called Lean Built Manufacturing Freedom. And my co-host and I, Andrew Henry of Henry Holsters, we go into deeper aspects of manufacturing that just don't fit in a YouTube video like this. So look for the link below and check out the Lean Built podcast. It's on all the major podcasting platforms. You know, I'll actually save the other two things that I've been working on for future videos because it's Fixture Friday. Let's get started. So the part we're looking at today is what I've creatively named a rail. Now you'll see this part in our pro palette system our mini pallet system, and our new horizontal pallet system. In short, we make thousands of these parts per year, so it's really important that we practice continual improvement so that we can make this part in high volumes without sacrificing quality while simultaneously reducing our labor costs. Now, in the past, we've run off one lots of different ways. The first approach was two parts in a double vise. It seemed like a natural first step, but it was also painful. So then we moved it to our Doosan MX2100 and I made a video on that and I'll leave a link in the description below. Now for the second operation, we used the knife makers approach in which we bolt these parts down to a pallet up from the bottom. Now Fixture Fridays 8 and 15, talk about that approach. But for today, my machinist John came up with a killer pallet that radically improved our throughput for OP1. Let's take a closer look. So we started off here with one of our common off the shelf 10 inch by 16 inch pallets. Now these expanding clamps are also off the shelf. Now I really like these clamps because they're pretty efficient from a motion standpoint meaning that every time you tighten them, they expand both ways. So you're actually clamping on two parts with one turn. Now, the only custom thing that John made are these work stops, or I've, uh, I think I'm calling them fixture rails. Yeah, fixture rails. Now, if you look at these from the side, you'll notice that these fixture rails, they're, they're unique meaning that they have a tapered angle on the faces that make contact with the part. Now, this is important because one of the downsides of these expanding clamps is that they have a relatively low clamping force. So to get a reliable grip on a part, normally you don't have too many choices. Uh, you can, A, you can increase the number of clamps for more surface contact, but more clamps means higher cost. Or B, you can use the next bigger clamp size, which has higher clamping forces. But in this case, bigger clamps would have caused us to lose a row or even two rows on the pallet. So you can see how these fixtured rails made it so we use the mechanical advantage of a tapered edge to get a good grip on the round stock. Now, by the way, we're using round stock because rounds are way more common than rectangular sizes, even to the point where this material has literally never gone out of stock in all the years of making it this way. Now, trust me, we've had lots of issues over the years trying to get rectangle bar on a consistent basis. I digress. Now, let me throw out a few tips that we just need more people knowing about. 
Now the first is to add a dab of high pressure grease on the inside of the clamp wall to minimize friction so that the screw torque converts to higher clamping force. Now remember, friction is one of the main factors that can reduce clamping force, even like friction on a lead screw in a vise. Now I personally recommend MagnaLube and just a thin layer is all you'll need or else you might get chips attracted to it and stuck in the grease. Now I don't do paid endorsements, so you'll just have to Google it to find a supplier for MagnaLube. Now the other tip that I wanna cover is unrealized forces applied to the pallet. Now, when you have this many clamps that are exerting a cumulative linear clamping force, there's a chance that these forces will add up or stack up and actually bend the pallet itself. Now, I had John run a quick experiment to demonstrate this, so let me show you the results. Now, he prepped this pallet by placing all the parts in place and then simply hand tighten the clamps until they made contact with the parts. No high torque, just contact. Now at this point, we zeroed out an indicator on the center height of the pallet. Now, since these clamps are going to be torqued outside of the machine, we made sure the pallet was in the unlocked state and then tightened each clamp to the recommended 96 inch pounds of torque. When we lock the pallet down, we're seeing that the vertical deflection is under two thousands. Now, it's not actually that big of a deal on this particular operation for a few reasons. Now, the first one is that it's simply a first op part. There's still plenty of raw material that gets machined away in op two. Now, the second reason is that we only removed 50 thousandths from the top of the pallet, so we've got plenty of thickness to resist bowing. So keep this in mind, if you have a thinner fixture and your parts have a dimension that might be thrown off by any bow. Now, I don't wanna throw us under the bus, so I gotta mention that after op two, this part goes to heat treat and then it goes on our CNC grinder where we bring it to plus or minus two ten thousandths flatness and parallelism. So that's why we can get away with producing a plus or minus five thousandths part off the machine. Once again, I digress. So how about some stats? Now, the double vice approach gave us two parts with a cycle time of eight minutes, 20 seconds. Now that comes out to four minutes, 10 seconds per part. Now using this pallet gives us 18 parts with a cycle time of 67 minutes, 30 seconds. That comes out to three minutes, 45 seconds per part. So yeah, it's obviously faster per part, uh, mostly because we only had five tool changes for this entire pallet. Instead of 45 for two parts, nine runs in a double vise. So that's a huge boost right there. But high density work holding naturally means shorter moves between parts. And we also used a bonus technique of facing rows two at a time. But let me back up. Did you catch that first stat? John got to walk away from the machine for an hour to work on other important things. Now that right there is how you avoid the mindless work, the painful task of feeding a vice and free up people to do high value activities around the shop. Now, if you wanna learn more, check out our Fixture Friday playlist. And until next time, go innovate your production.